Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video, which I'll make very, very quick, I'm going to walk through the basics and really just how you can use the AppGyver data integrations in the new version of AppGyver. So I'm going to be using one of the more complex apps I made a while back, but I haven't really made any changes or updates to. I'll have a more detailed video on this, which I'll link in the description, but the high level overview is I have tons of free tutorials in the video tutorial section of codelessfix.com. Now there's a ton of different AppGyver tutorials and I will also link in the description to this playlist one of the videos which I'm going to go over shortly mainly just comparing the old UI to the new one now the main thing to note here I've had tons of people commenting or I've had comments on how do things work in the new community edition things of that nature so I'm going to walk through the basics this video uses the older version of AppGyver now it's known as SAP build apps so the general idea was when you would go in AppGyver you would edit everything from here. So for example, you can see this old version of the API uh, setup. Now, if we go to the new version of AppGyver or SAP Build Apps, you'll see we have launch integrations just like we did before. The main difference here is we have the old version, which has base, get, get, post, put, delete. Now, if it's disabled over here, you don't use it. If you have a relative path, it goes here, additional information here, response key path here, and again, URL placeholders. Then you go to test, test it, set your API or your, um, your schema from response, and then you can check your schema and details here, and you have your base here. So basically, you set your base up and then go through the remainder. This is very similar in the new option. So in the new SAP build apps, we have universal REST API or OData integration. OData is a very simple version. I prefer the universal API integration. And then basically you can just select the options that you want here in the previous builder. It was over here in the right-hand corner. You'll choose your data entity name. And then very similar to the previous, you have your base URL, entity description, resource schema. So you basically set everything up here and you can add additional query parameters here. You can go if you want to enable lists and it's just like we did before. You have your relative path, your request method, headers, body mapper, etc. You can test here, auto detect schema from response and then update and manage that schema here. So again, very, very similar to the past builder. And again, if you want, I'll scroll through. So we have retrieve, create, update. These are all almost identical. They just change the request method. But again, compared to past options, you can browse and things of that nature. But the past builder was very, very similar. It's just for the most part been remapped. But as far as the fields are concerned, they're for the most part the same. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.